You know what I noticed about you? You think young. Huh? You think young, and that's that's good. That's that's yeah, really great. Uh huh. My Pretty friend uh, Jack was asking, "Are you a veteran?" He's a veteran. Oh, really? Yeah. The brand. Army. Oh, army. I was praise you.
Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you, praise you, acknowledge you, love on you, brag on you, teach about you, learn about you. Father, it's all about you. So, Father, we come to you, just open minds, open to receive whatever you want to teach us, Lord. Let this be your spirit taking taking precedence here, Father God. Let this, this message be spirit-led, that you are here with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. We're never outside of your presence. So we're here to acknowledge that and, and to just you know bask in that presence, Father God. And we know that we're coming to you through Jesus Christ, that the blood is the avenue in which we can come to you. So we thank you for that blood that was shed, your body broken, we acknowledge that. And we just, um, we're just here to uh, know you better. Take us to that special place. Amen and amen, amen. 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 Carlos. Oh, yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, our cardio. Yeah, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's our cardio. Can I get a record? Oh, that's Good. Amen. Ready for the word. Okay, so guess what the subject is today? What did I say it was, Dylan? Do you remember? You said it was about um, that we already have it. That we, yeah, that we're responding to God. We're responding to God. We're not trying to get God to respond to us. God's, okay, the yeah, new we're covenant message God. is that we are responding to God. Yeah. Okay, so we think we got to pound down the door of heaven and somehow get God's attention. Okay, no, he needs to get our attention. Right? Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking. We don't have to pound out the door of heaven when Jesus is knocking, trying to step into your heart. He says, I stand at the door and knock. You open up the door and let me in. We're going to come in and have a meal. And the reason he says we're going to come in and have a meal is because back then in the day, a meal wasn't just, hey. Hi, Cardio. Hey. <laughs> we found a place. <laughs> it, Back to, he says, if you open up the door and let me in, I stand at the door knock. He says that in Revelation. I stand at the door knock. If you open up the door, let me in. I'll come in. We'll have a meal. The reason he says a meal is because back then in the day, a meal wasn't just, you know, sit down and, hey, you know, go to Black Bear, set the table, eat food. It was an act. They had a table on the ground, and they had big pillows that they sat back in cushions, mm -hmm. and it was, a, it was a festivity. It was an all-day, it was an all-night thing. It was all-nighter. It was fellowship. It was relationship. It wasn't just sit down and have a meal. So when he's talking about a meal, he's talking about, dude, this is fellowship, you know, communication. This is responding. You know, this is this is a, a relationship. That's what he means. That's why he says a meal. I believe that's why he says a meal. Okay, because it was back then a meal was a big deal. Right. If you're, you're inviting people over for a meal, it was a big deal. It was. It was. They right? didn't eat very often in the ancient world. It, they were a lot of the uh, yeah, kings did. They didn't have that much food. food was scarce, so when they had a meal. It was a big deal, you know. He had food. But when he says he's open up. Please open up the door. I'm knocking. He's asking you to open up the door of your heart. Yep. Let him in to your heart, right? Because we have hard hearts without him. Right. But when he come, when he when we open our heart and let him in, he gives us a new heart. Uh -huh. About yeah, he gives you a new heart. We right. actually, you actually want to please God now. I mean, we, we don't. People say to repentance, you have to repent to be saved. Repentance is part of salvation. It, it's just you cannot truly come to God without repenting, only because repentance is like I read recently that it's, repentance is, is the other side of the coin of faith. Faith and repentance go together because you can't really truly have faith faith in Jesus unless you really want change in your life until you want something mm. better, something new. That's repentance. A change of mind that leads to a change of action. That's repentance. People think repentance is just turning away from all sin, all known sin, and then coming to God. That's where, what most people preach repentance, right? Turn away from all known sin and, and come to God. The problem with that is we can't do that without the Holy Spirit in us. We have what's called the Adamic nature, the sinful nature, right? right? You're born with the Adamic nature. We're all sinners because of Adam, right? Adam it, ate from the fruit in the garden. Right. Therefore, we're all born natural sinners. Right. We're, we're, Bible says we're spiritually dead. We're not even. We have no life in us. We're spiritually dead. Uh -huh. We have the Adamic nature. So outside of Christ in us, His Spirit in us, we don't have a capacity to stop sinning. Oh, so right. to tell people that you got to stop sinning, repent, and then come to God to, before you can come to God, you got to repent. 
that's putting the the the, the, the putting cart the, on the, you. the horse before the cart the, the cart before the horse. It's putting you're trying to establish right? your own righteousness. Yeah, you're trying yeah. to establish your own righteousness. Mm -hmm. You got to just come as messed up as you are, you know, like me. When I first come to the Lord, I couldn't break free from dr drug addiction. I had a drug addiction. I couldn't break free from it. And to tell me that you got to stop that before you can come to the Lord. What? Yeah. I'm a serious drug addict. Uh -huh. I can't stop it. Yeah. I need help. Uh -huh. And God is the one who can give you the help you need. Mm -hmm. So I come to God for salvation. I come to God for the help that I need. If I need help to stop sinning, well, he's going to have to help me with that. The Bible says that he works in us to will and to do what pleases him. So, And I work that out. He says, work out your own salvation, for he works in you to will and to do what pleases him. So God starts a work in you to actually want to please God. That's God working in you. So that ability to stop sinning has to come from, from the power of God in you. Right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear and timidity, but a spirit of love and power and sound mind. So the power to stop sinning is the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Right? Amen. Yeah. It's a new nature in you. So to put that on people and say, well, you have to repent to be saved. You know, uh, the Bible says we can't even come to him unless the Father first draws to him. The Bible right. says it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Right. So i got to realize how good God is so he can work that repentance out of me. Oh. Right? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if the goodness of God leads me to repentance, well, how good is he? Right? I need to realize that God is a good God, dying for many sins, suffering in my place, so I can put my faith in a Savior, and then that will, that will work that repentance out of me. It will come. Right? Because it's right. goodness of God that leads me there. Right. It's like the prodigal son. When the prodigal son came home, he wasn't done? sorry. He wasn't sorry for anything. He was hungry, and he came home, and the father ran to him, hugged him, kissed him, and now the boy's heart was changed. That repentance that God is looking for as a response to his love when the father hugged him and kissed him and said, showered him with gifts, it was like the boy was so blown, blown away. It was like, Dad, whatever you say, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm your boy. Uh -huh. You know, thank you that you, I, was, I sure wasn't expecting this. Right. Now there was a heart of repentance. Now he was responding to him the way God wants him to respond. Right. That repentance, his goodness had to get the repentance. Right. That makes sense? Yes. Seriously. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a parallel, you know, uh, Jacob and Esau. Uh-huh. Jacob went to Esau in, in uh, the reconciliation. He ran to him, Esau ran to him and threw his arms around him and kissed him. It's similar to the prodigal son, but Jacob came in fear. And when he saw Esau, he says, "I see you. When I see you, it's like seeing the face of God." Yeah, and that, that's that's a, that's a, that's a similar parallel. A similar parallel because he was expecting. He didn't know what to expect. He punishment. He had he, he, he had, had a whole he had like uh, yeah he had down. everybody yeah. circled around each other like yeah. a like a caravan. Yeah, you know. Right. Uh, uh, the parallel, yeah, yeah. It, because he was so afraid of what his brother was going to do, but it, what, he, what his brother did was the opposite. He was hugged the opposite. him and yeah, kissed and him. He said it, it broke That's him a good down. parallel. Yeah, I never was, saw that before. I just saw, I noticed that <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I was reading it. And I said, that's like the prodigal son, you know? It is. Yeah. yeah. But it's unexpected love. Unexpected love. It, it's totally unexpected. It's like, I sure didn't expect this. Well, can we see that from God? We don't, I mean, who would ask God, listen, God, I understand I'm a sinner. Okay, and I, I, I have a damnic nature. I'm a sinful by birth. Okay, I'm, I come into this world a sinner, and I, I can't even change. But listen, could you do me a favor and come and become a man and die for my sins and suffer in my place? And after you do that and, and die for my sins, okay, to open this door for me to come to you through the blood of Jesus, and on top of that, actually send your Holy Spirit into me so that I can actually motivate me to live right from now on out? Okay, could, could, would you do that for me? We would never even ask for that. Because that's what God did. You see, it's unexpected. It's, uh, it's, uh, you wouldn't even ask for what God gives. Mm -hmm. right. but, but that's what God gives yeah. you. He gives you a new spirit. He gives you a new heart. And he actually works in you to will and to do what pleases him. It's just a change of heart. You know, God, God would rather you do less for him with the right heart right. than doing a whole lot of stuff with the wrong heart. Right. You know, sense. hey, yeah. seriously, he says that in, in 1 Corinthians. He says that if you give everything you have to the poor, that's pretty good. If I gave everything I own to the poor, he says, but you don't do it motivated by love, it actually profits you nothing. Wow. Nothing. Wow. He's more concerned with why you do it than what you do, because he wants you to benefit too. He doesn't want just them blessed. He wants you blessed in the giving. That's why he says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Hey. That's why he says it's more blessed to give than to receive, because he wants you blessed in the giving. He doesn't want the givers, the, the receivers blessed. He wants you blessed giving it. And the only way that's going to happen if there's some agape love, some of God's kind of love going on in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Let's. Where can she sit? With there's some shade. Right over here, maybe, or over there, right next to. You oh, gotta find a place where there's some shade over there, yeah. over here, yeah. over here. Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. There's shade there. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Hello. We have Red Bulls and cold waters. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. He was prepared. Prepared <laughs> with ice. <laughs> <laughs> we, we started. We started a little early because people came early, but that, that's good. okay. Yeah, I'll be better next time. Yeah, no, no, you're doing you're fine. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. You we got a good subject yeah. going here, right? <laughs> yeah, good. Right. Yeah, it's good, a good subject yeah. because the, the the topic what I wanted to go with is that um, is the reason I went here is because Dylan shared with recently that well, I don't have to say who it is, but somebody was teaching Bible and they were talking about the scripture that says that there are those who profess to be how does it say? They profess it? to know God, but in works they deny Him. Okay, every, there are those every. who profess to know God, but in their works they deny Him. And what else? That, that they they reprobate. And, and so every, they're reprobate. And, reprobate. and and what this person was doing was applying that to Christians, to say that if we are claiming to know God, claiming to be Christian, but we're living sinful lives, right. that we can be reprobate. And God, there's another scripture that mentions reprobate, and He says He gives people over to a reprobate mind. There's another scripture where it mentions reprobate. Yeah, there's something about, okay. where it talks about. But, but in the context of, huh? Yeah, there's something about where it says, examine yourselves and see if you're in the faith. Because uh, 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 if you're not, basically, in paraphrasing, then you're reprobate. Yeah. If you, in case you're well, reprobate. The, the point is that yeah. preaching it the way that they do, they preach it as if the Christians can be reprobate. They could be a reprobate Christian, therefore God will kick you out the kingdom. God will exclude you because, after all, you're living sinful lives and you're claiming to be Christian, but you're not really. Well, that's somebody who, he says, those who profess to know God. It's not a Christian. It's not somebody who has received the Spirit of God in them. It's not somebody who's saved. Somebody who professes to be no God, but denies him by their works, by their actions. You can tell they really, they're, they're not really Christian. That's basically what it's saying. But if you take that and apply that to Christians, then people get fearful about, am I reprobate? Am I a lazy Christian? A am I, you know, are my, am I doing enough works? You see what I mean? Now it's works relationship. Now you're trying to establish your own righteousness. Right? You just took away the grace factor. Did I'm mm -hmm. saved by grace through faith and not by my works? That's what the Bible says. Now I took it from the saved by faith through grace and I put it into my works. You see what I mean? You never want to do that. Right. Okay? And some of that teaching can take that away. And that's why I wanted to show you that we are not trying to get God to respond to us. We are, tr we are to respond to God. God is, re that's what he gave us the cross for. Mm -hmm. Something to respond to. I mean, how could you not right. respond to that? That's why he gave us the cross and Jesus dying on it and suffering in our place and paying our debt. So we could respond to that. We're supposed to be responding to God and his kindness. Like I said, it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. We're supposed to be responding to his goodness. And we're saying we have to respect to get God's goodness. It says it's the goodness of God that leads us to repent. It's the opposite. We're saying if you don't repent, you don't get it. No, we gotta realize how good he is so I can repent. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my gosh, that's good. <laughs> Seriously. So we're not, so here's the thing, is I'm trying to put, tell God, well, why hasn't he healed me? Why isn't he doing this for me? Why is God not helping me with this and that? We're telling him, we're trying to play, who's God in that picture? The person. Who, who's playing God? The, the one who's trying to tell God, you gotta respond yeah. to my will. You gotta do what I want. Okay. Why aren't you doing it? Right? right. We're yeah. supposed to respond to his will. Right? right? It's not him, not him responding to my will. Right? right? It's backwards. Yeah. And that's why people do that. That's why people go there, because they don't understand how grace works. People right. that are mad at God, or they're blaming God, or they're saying, why isn't he doing right. this? Why is he doing this? They're, they're, they're coming from the wrong perspective. That's why they do that. Instead of you think saying, that God's what are you teaching me? Oh, my gosh. It, it's good yeah. to know what is he doing in me. What is yeah. he? Why, where is he moving me? I mean, you yeah. got all, you got if you have a love for the Bible. You have you are not rep reprobate. You have a love for the Bible. You enjoy the Word. You like God. You you're interested in God. You want God. You're thinking about Him. He's in your thoughts. You're going to church. You're doing these things. You're dude. That's the fruit of the Holy yeah. Spirit. That that's what God is doing through you. He's doing that for you. You don't do it for Him. He's moving you. You're not you know, you're not trying to get Him to move for you. He's moving you in that direction. That's right. See, and when people get it backwards, yeah. Yeah, they say that, yeah, like lazy that, Christians or something. Yeah. yeah, that's why in that story, the okay, look, I like to go into jail, and I like, when I go into jail, I like to minister to these guys in jail, and I, I tell them that that uh, that like, suppose, okay, 
you guys are in here for breaking the law, right? You, you did right. something, yeah. and, and you're in here for jail for, for breaking the law, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for sinning, okay? And, and uh, there's a story in the Bible where this woman was caught in the act, and you guys were caught in the act. That's why you're here. Right. Caught in the act. Right. Yeah, there's a woman in the Bible who was caught in the act of adultery, sleeping with somebody else's husband, that, and it's one of the big ten, the Ten Commandments. Do not commit adultery. She was caught in the act. And Jesus says to her, now, can you hear him saying that to you? I say this mm. to the guys in jail. Mm. Can you hear him saying this to you? I don't condemn you. Go sin no more. Wow. That's what he said to her. Caught in the act. One of the big ten. Yeah. And some of these guys are in there for murder. Yeah. Big ten. Mm. Stealing. Oh. Lot of deception. They, you know, the counterfeiters and all kinds of things where they deceptive. They're lies. I don't, I don't condemn you. I don't condemn you. You're lying, I don't condemn you. You're stealing, I don't condemn you. Murder, don't condemn you. <laughs> Can you hear it? Mm. That's what Jesus is doing for this woman. Wow. And that, and that's even before the cross. That's before the cross, you haven't gone to the cross yet. Oh. He's given her a down payment of what's coming, of, of where we should be living. Yeah. He, after the, we're living after the cross. We know that we, there is no condemnation for you in Christ, none. Who? And you're in Christ. If you're a believer, if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he could die for my sins, that he did it. Not only could, he did. Mm -hmm. First, you got to believe he could. Then you've got to believe he did. Then you got to believe that that, that works for me. That, that actually works for me. His death on a cross, suffering in my place, actually works for my relationship to God. Now I can come. The Bible says you can come into the holiest through the blood. That's where the blood was shed, at the cross. That's through the cross. And the Bible says the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to those being saved by it, it is the very power of God. we got to see the power in the cross. The people that are being saved understand there is power in what happened at the cross. Power to save me. Power to change me. Well, yeah. is, is that good? It, it's true. But those that are perishing, those that are going to hell, it, it's a joke. You, right? Isn't that it was that's what I see in the, the story in, in 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 Noah's Ark? That's what that's symbolic of the people that got in the boat. You know they they, hey, they took it serious. Well, they took it serious. You know he's built. Okay, there's a there's a story in the Bible in Genesis where it says that the water before uh, before Moses was building a boat it had never rained. But when Moses built that boat, it had never rained. Okay, mist what? came out of the ground. Huh? Noah. Yeah, what did I yeah. say? No Moses. What is it, Moses? Moses? He said Moses. Oh, okay, sorry. Good, thank know, you. Correct you know me. You I know I make mistakes. Yeah. I see them on, he, on here, right. and I'm like, but please okay. correct me so I get it. If, if you, I make a mistake, correct me so I can fix it for the video. Yeah. Sometimes I'm in such a role that I, I miss it. <laughs> Mist came out yeah. of the ground. Okay. But, but, yeah, it says that what? Mist and vapor came Mist. out of the ground. The water came up through the ground. Yeah. It had never rained. It did not rain before. During the time when Noah was told to build a boat, it had never rained. And he's building a boat on dry ground. And the people are like, why aren't you building a boat over there near the water? What, uh, yeah. what's oceans, what are you doing? Hundreds of miles. Yeah. Hundreds of miles, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. miles from the ocean. What are you doing? Yeah. And I'm sure they thought it was a joke. Okay. And I sure don't know. I probably explained to them, you know what? Hey, uh, you know, it's going to flood. And, you know, I'm building a boat because God said he's going to flood the earth. And, you know, you can participate in this. You can help me out. And you can get to be saved by this, you know, get in a boat when it rains. When the flood comes, you can be in a boat and be secure. You know, hey. And I'm, But I'm sure like them, like the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Yeah. They probably We're thought, what a him. joke. Are you kidding me? Rain. What is that? You know, quack. You know, building a boat on dry land. Are you okay, Noah? Yeah. Are you all right? You know, you kind of, kind of scramble brain, don't you think? Yeah. See, the cross is foolishness. Those are perishing. That's what that's symbolic of. But guess what? Those who, be, those, but the cross is, it, it, to those who are, are saved by it, it is the very power of God. Yeah. Those who were going to be saved by the boat and got in, they saw the power of God in saving them from the flood. Mm -hmm. See, that's, what the, that's, that's why the wooden boats are symbolic of the wooden cross. Mm. There is salvation through the cross, just like they were saved through the boat. Right? Isn't that good? That's yeah, good, yeah. That's heavy. And there yeah. was a flood. The, the flood is symbolic of the, the wrath of God, the judgment of God. That's what the flood represents. And the people in the boat were saved from the wrath of God, from God's judgment. That's what the Bible says. Those who believe on Jesus will never be judged. You've already passed from death into life. Mm. Those who believe on him will never be condemned. Only those who don't believe are condemned already. That's what the Bible says. So there's no judgment for those a believer. And don't question your faith. Just put it in the right place. It's not how big your faith is. 
It's how big is the object of your faith? How big is your God? My God is big enough to become a man and die for my sins. That's pretty big, right? He can do that. He's big enough. He's powerful enough. And why not? People think, well, how could he become a man? I mean, I mean, come on. How could he be a man here and be a man up there? I've heard people say that. Jehovah Witness, come to my door. And I tell them that Jesus is God. And they're, how could he do that? How could he, be, how could he be a man down here and be a man up there? You know, how could he be both? How could he be both? You know, I'm like, wait a minute. We're talking, let me, let me we're ask talking you. about. We're talking about God, right? You know what the Bible says about God? Nothing is too hard for him. Right. Nothing is impossible right. for him. And you're telling me, how can he? Why wouldn't he? Right, if we right, have right. a totally warped perspective of God, why not become a man and show him what he is like? Mm. And that's what it was. The Pharisees, the religious leaders of today, had such a warped perspective of God. He was God in the flesh, and they hated him. They crucified him. That was their perspective of God. They hated mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Didn't they, Jesus said that when you love, how can you claim to love God, who's invisible, if you don't love your own brother who's right in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. So here were these religious leaders, they hated the Gentiles, yeah. they hated the Romans, they hated the Samaritans, they hated the tax collectors, the prostitutes, all the sinners, they even hated Jesus who was God. It was, a, it was a religion of hatred, and that's what he's saying, how can you claim to love God when you hate your own people in front of you? And they hated everybody. Mm. And those were the religious leaders. I got news for you. It's the same way today. It's not, there's some really, there's, it's, 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 it's the same way this way today. People, they, they're clueless. They have a zeal for God, but they don't have knowledge. Mm. They're trying to preach a God that doesn't exist. They're preaching a God that is loveless, a judgmental, difficult to get along with, walk on eggshells kind of God. It is not the case. Mm. You don't have to walk on eggshells around him. He says, I, I give you my Holy Spirit so you can cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. And you can come to me boldly to, to the throne of grace, not judgment. Anytime you need mercy and grace, you can come. Anytime you sin, anytime you need mercy, anytime you need grace, come boldly. Not fearful, not crying for mercy, not begging for forgiveness, not confessing all your sins. Boldly come to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace whenever you need it. That's what the Bible says. That's the invitation. Like the prodigal son was afraid, kind of nervous about coming home. Should he have been nervous? Yes. No. The father was waiting for him. He no, was looking he, for him. But he was, he, he was nervous because of everything he did. Because yeah. of him. Yeah. Because but, of him. but it was the because wrong, the my point is it was the wrong perspective of the father. Oh. Yeah. There yeah. was no reason to be nervous. But he knew he blew it anyway. So that's, that's why, why he, he was, was nervous. nervous. Yeah. And that's why we're nervous, because we blow it all the time. We're enemies of okay? oh. but, but that's the Adamic nature that we used to have that we shouldn't have that hides from God because of sin. That's the Adamic nature. We don't have that anymore. God gave you the Holy Spirit. Your body is the Holy Spirit. You don't, the Bible says that you are not of the flesh, but the Spirit of God be in you. That's the flesh, Adamic nature. We don't have that anymore. You're not in the flesh. That's yeah. heavy. Yeah. Who that's told, heavy. Who told so, you you were so naked? Yeah. He's saying, who told you you were naked? It's like today. You know, what he, what he, that's good. What he, told, what he told Adam, he said, who told you you were naked? I didn't tell you that. He said, where, do you, where are you? What are you doing? He says, well, I hid from you because I'm naked. You know? And, 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 yeah, right? And, and he said, who told you that? I didn't tell you that. <laughs> Why are you covering yourself with fig leaves? I didn't tell you you're naked. naked. You didn't hear that from me. See, they opened their ears to another voice. And it's the same thing today. People are telling you that you're naked. You better, you better clean it up. You know, you're out of fellowship. God don't want to talk to you. You better go hide among the trees until you fix this. Jesus fixed it. Yeah. We don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's heavy. Isn't it great? Yeah. So we're focused on our junk, and he says, no, focus on a Savior. Okay? We're fixated on how far we fall short. He says, look how far you've come. Look how far you've come. Look where you used to be. Look where you used to be. You didn't even care about me. You loved sin. Now you hate sin. And you love me. Look how far you've come. Devil wants, he's the accuser of the brethren. He wants you to focus on the junk. 
Go ahead. If God, if God gave you salvation when you didn't do anything to deserve it, you were you didn't care, but you didn't tithe, you didn't read your Bible. God gave you the best gift, the Holy Spirit, and salvation. How much more will He do for you now that you're you care? Oh you, my God, I have that here. It's funny you say that because the Bible the Bible, the Bible kid, yeah. says that we think He'll do less now that I'm saved. The Bible says how much more? How much? How, how much does more? He, how does it say? It says uh, for when we were enemies. It says how much more. We do now that we're uh, record Let's look at that. Yeah, let's look let's at, look it. at yeah. it. It's in Romans 5. This is heavy because we think you'll do less now that you're saved. Okay? You were an unbeliever. You were living in sin. You had nothing but the Adamic nature. You were in the flesh. And he says, those in the flesh cannot please God. That was your state. You weren't righteous, but no one is righteous. All right? You weren't even seeking God. The Bible says no one is righteous. No one even seeks after God. No one does good. That was your state before being saved. Okay, that's all. That's what you were, and now we think that once you become Christian, you got, he's going to do less than save you. The Bible says the opposite. I'm going to show you. This is deep. We hear ministries, ministers that tell you this that he'll do less. You got to walk on angels. You better really bump it up, or you'll 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 be a, what, what's that word? A, reprobate. Reprobate. Mm. He'll kick you out if you willfully sin. No, nothing but judgment for you now. That you was know, true that, under the old covenant. That, that, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they do no sacrifice. That, that was true. But sin. now, if he's talking about a willful sin, there's only one sin God's dealing with. It's unbelief. That's only one sin that will take you to hell. He said, Jesus said that he'll forgive us of all sin. Every sin will be forgiven except for one. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. What do you think that is? Rejection of the Holy Spirit. Rejecting Jesus Christ. It's insulting the Spirit of grace. That's what it's talking about when he talks about the willful sin. Yeah. He says you're insulting the Spirit of grace. That's the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It's the un unforgivable sin. It's unbelief. Wow. Who? And see, people pull those scriptures out and they try and mess with your head as a Christian. Who do you think's behind that? The devil. Who wants to mess with your head as the a devil. Christian? The devil. Who wants to make you think that you're you're you're, you're going to miss out? The devil. Dude, God. God wants you to know that you already have an A. I already gave you a passing grade. He, Jesus said it like this: Those who believe on Him have already passed from death into life. You will never come under judgment. Jesus said it. People land on all these other things that He said that are harsh. You know, hard, hard if you don't judge, if you judge, you'll be judged. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you condemn, you'll be condemned. You call somebody a fool, you're going to go to hell. You know, they land on those, but they miss this one. Mm -hmm. Jesus also said the father judges no one. He's given all judgment to the son so that everyone will honor the son the same as the father. He said the father judges nobody. He, he gave it to me to judge, and I'm choosing to take your, your judgment to the cross. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. People yeah. miss that, you know. He said, he, said, he said in one place, he said that if you you got to be more righteous than Pharisees if you want to get in the kingdom. you got to be super righteous if you want to get in the kingdom. Because they're not righteous and neither are you. So you got to bump up your righteousness to get in. That's what he said. But then he said elsewhere, he says, if you, you're not even going to get in the kingdom unless you're born again. See? Two different programs. Do I got to be super righteous or do I just need to be trusting Jesus for my new birth? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it about being born again or is it about being super righteous? No, if you're born again, God gives you his righteousness. He imputes his righteousness to the believer. It's God's righteousness. That's why Jesus in that Sermon on the Mount, he said, seek first the righteousness of God. No, seek first uh, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God and, and his, his righteousness, righteousness and all these other things will be added. So we just need to seek the righteousness of God. Where do you find that? Where? Jesus. Jesus. The righteousness of God is Jesus. Nobody's righteous. Only one ever walked this earth and was truly righteous in and of themselves. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. He fulfilled the law perfectly. He was perfectly righteous. He was perfectly holy. He's the only one who was. So, gee, when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, gee, it's Jesus. He was pointing you to himself. The only avenue to God. We approach God through the blood, the Bible says. Right? The only avenue. He said, nobody comes to the Father except by me. It's the only way. Oh, my gosh, that's good. Okay, so you ready? Romans yeah. 5. Romans 5. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. I want to help you. Why do you think I'm so pumped? You know, why do you think this pumps me up? Why do you think I think I'm pumped about preaching? Why am I pumped about preaching the gospel? Because I know what it is. If you don't know what the gospel is, you're not going to be very pumped about telling it. Right? But if you know how good it is, how blessed we are to even be saved by through yeah. the blood, well then you got nothing. You got something to shout about. And I've been forgiven of. For, oh been my saved. gosh. I've been forgiven. There's a there's a, a series a sermon that we teach this guy um, 
um, uh, I forget his name, but he does a series called, uh, it's called You Already Have an A. Uh, Pete Briscoe. Pete Bri Briscoe. He does a series called You Already Have, have an A. That means God already gave you a passing grade for your faith. Yeah. Uh, you have a passing grade. If you believe on Jesus Christ for your salvation, and, and don't let nobody steal that. Just trust in Jesus for your salvation. I'm not trusting in myself. I'm trusting in him. And he gives you a passing grade. You already, you already, that's what he meant when he said you already passed from death into life. That's why John said if you have the Son, you have life. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. And he says, I'm writing this so you can know you have eternal life. Because he gives you a passing grade. You already have an A+, plus, dude. You can't get any better grade than Jesus on your behalf. His righteousness is an A. Yeah, his so, righteousness. How would you grade the righteousness of Christ? A B, a C, a, a D, plus. an A+. Plus. Right. Well, the Bible says he's now imputing his righteousness unto those who believe. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An A+. Plus. Yeah. It's pretty good. It goes further, it says that he, uh, he became <laughs> sin so that we might become the righteous of God. So he took our F. He, he did. Yeah. That, that's a good point. He says that he became sin for you so that you might, you might because it takes faith. He says that he became sin for us. He did that. That's not a might. He went to the cross. He suffered for the sins of the world. He became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So what that is, that's an exchange. Like Dylan is saying, that's an exchange. He took the F so we can have an A. He became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. He, he took our F and he gives us his A. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah, we let that truth change us. Oh, my gosh. Are you going to take some junk to the grave? Uh, if you're on your deathbed and you're, you're questioning your salvation, don't. You put your, your faith where, you should, where it belongs, in a Savior. Like Catholics, they have a priest come and pray over you. You know, last rites. Right, your last rites. You know, uh, and they even have a play, thing called a purgatory or something where yeah. they can you pray you, where you can get halfway. You're kind of halfway <laughs> in, and they can pray you the rest of the way in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kawak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the Bible. <laughs> you're the in or you're out. Yeah, that's right. You're the saved by the blood, or you're not saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad we're recording this. Yeah, this is good. good. <laughs> Okay, so you ready? <laughs> Romans 5, what? Uh, Romans 5, you ready? Yeah. Romans 5, 9. Okay. Much more, okay, let's, let's go back to 6. Okay. For when we were still without strength, okay, I didn't, you know, you know what that means? I didn't even have strength to stop sinning. Yeah. This stop sinning thing that people say yeah. you got to stop your sinning before you can come to God. you got to stop your sin. you got to repent and then come to God. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, you got to... He's saying we were out strength. That means you didn't have the strength to stop. Right? right? Right. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly, not the godly. We think he dies for good people. No. You better realize you're bad and you need a savior so he could die for you. Okay? If you're not ungodly, he didn't die for you. He says he only died for the ungodly. Dude, you better recognize. Right? For scarcely will a righteous man will one die... Yet perhaps a good man, someone, will even dare to die. Okay, what, what that's saying is that, you know, I would never die for an enemy. I might lay down my life for my friend Dylan, but I wouldn't lay down my life for an enemy. Okay, right? I might die for a good man, maybe even a righteous man. Right? Look what he says. But God demonstrates his love toward us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? So, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say, he says, much more. Here we go. Here's the much more. Okay? Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from any wrath through him. See, no more wrath. You don't have to fear anger from God. You don't have to fear God being upset with you. Yeah. Okay? Because you're going to be saved through, the, through him, through the blood. Mm -hmm. For when we were in it, see, this is the point he's making. I might die for Dylan. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Right? But he says, but if we, we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of a son. See, he died for his enemies. Much more having been reconciled, that means made friends, we shall be saved by his life. You know what this is saying? I'm going to help you out with this. Like I said, we think God will do less now that we're saved. This said twice in two paragraphs that he'll do much more now that we're his friends. More, not less. 
So do we have to walk on eggshells? We didn't have to walk on eggshells. Hey, come on over. <laughs> we didn't have, on walk, have to walk on eggshells to be saved. Right. Did you have to walk on eggshells to be saved? <laughs> no. No. Not at all. He went to the cross before, you know. Come on over. Join give us. Him, give him a water. We, we start a Bible study here at 8 o'clock. Uh, 8 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, yeah. Okay. Huh? I just, uh, I'm waiting for the Bible Okay, yeah, that's us. Yeah. Oh, here's the Bible Yeah, we just we do a Bible study before. So come, you can you join us. Come on water? over. You want some cold? Oh. Okay, well, great. great. You want some Here's cold water? Oh, nice. Thank you. Okay. We got some good subjects we talk about. We talk about the grace of God and try to help you know how good you have it with the Lord and how yeah. unconditional yeah. love is yeah. and, his, his, and, and, and how, how much you should, you should be enjoying him. I believe you. Know? <laughs> we should be enjoying God. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, he provided a cross so we can really enjoy him. I mean, that's what the cross yeah, is for, so we can enjoy him without the sin blockage. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, went to I just saw you living walking over there. No, no, no. I, I went to Abundant Life for 12 years. Mm. Oh, you Left did? about 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. so. yeah. Well, thanks for coming back. Things Thank you. Changed, but God's still good. I'm going to Bridges now. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Uh, right, thanks thank for you. doing that. Yeah. Oh, so he's with Bridge? Yeah, but, oh. he's, yeah, but he's still greeting us. Okay. I thought he said he was waiting for ACL, so he, said he, he said he's waiting for bridges. Yeah, he's greeting okay. the ALC of people. We welcome them. You know, sort of, Amen. Yeah. Okay, so you see this. Do you see this? He's yeah. not going to do less. He actually doesn't say, he doesn't even just say, he doesn't even say he'll do more. What does he say? He'll do much more. He'll do much more. Yeah. And we think he'll do much less now that you're saved. We got to walk in eggshells. He'll kick you out the kingdom. He'll... He'll, he'll reject you. He won't talk to you. No fellowship for you. He says he'll do more. Yeah. Right? People, yeah. They, where they get that wrong idea is that people think that they correct, you correct your own kids harder than you correct somebody else's kids. Yeah, and that's, that's where, where they, that, that's where that's they, where they put this idea that it, it's positional, that you're saved positionally, but then parentally, well, is that the word they use? Um, parentally, you need to ask for forgiveness because, you know, because it's parental. That's not in the Bible, by the way. Yeah, it's not. It's just, it doesn't it's, say that. You know, actually, this is a shocker. This is going to shock some people. But nowhere from, okay, G, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Okay, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. He goes to the cross at the end of those books. Okay, and then it takes you into sec uh, Luke is part one of a book, which is actually two parts. Acts is part two of Luke. The writer of Luke, okay. I mean, the, the, Luke, who wrote, the, uh, who wrote the book of Luke, also wrote the book of Acts. So those are two books. Okay, now at the end of Luke, Jesus died. He went to the cross and he rose from the dead. In the book of Acts, he sends his Holy Spirit at Pentecost into believers, right? Now, from that point on, from Acts through Revelation, the rest of your Bible, it never counsels you, advises you, suggests in any way, shape, or form to ask for forgiveness. And the reason for that is because we're forgiven as believers. You should be living forgiven. You shouldn't feel you have to ask for it. I mean, you could say, hey, I'm sorry, you know, forgive me. No problem. But it's not something, he's not, it, it's, it's not part of, a, it's not a law that you have to do. Yeah. You know, don't put people under law and say that's something you have to do, that you got to right. do that. Yeah. Because people do that. They say you got to cry for mercy. If you, you know, fail, you got to cry for mercy. Dude, the Bible says we can come boldly and get mercy. The Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy. Not cry for it. Right. Boldness. I mean, how can you be crying for mercy and at the same time be boldness coming and getting it? They don't mm -hmm. mix. Not even a little bit. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but this says that he'll do more for you. And it even says that what he's doing, it's free. Look at it. Look at verse 23. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. This is wrong. I, 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 I lost it. I went, jumped to a page. <laughs> but, but look at this. Let's look at all these much mores. We just looked at two much mores. Right? Look at this. Look at verse 15. Romans 5, verse 15. But the free gift... Now, understand, look how many times he says gift and look how many times he says much more. This is so important. People miss this. Yeah. He says it's a gift and he says it's free. Okay? He says it's a free gift. I don't know. A free gift means you don't earn this. It's, some people give a gift and they give it to you because you were good or you did do... You know, Dylan did some, did some work, did, some, did a me reward. a favor. And I gave him some. It was more like a reward. It wasn't really a free gift. 
You know, my, my Don Dylan probably saw it as a gift, but it wasn't really free. He did something for it. It wasn't a free gift. This is emphasizing it is a free gift. Look at this. Verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded to many. See, so there it says it's a gift and it says much more. Right? Verse 16. And the gift, see, gift again. This is a gift. God is saving you as a gift. He just wants to, listen, bottom line, God wants to do you a favor. Okay, that's a gift. I just want to do you a favor. And I want to save you. Okay, independent of you. I just want to save you. Now, can you believe I want to do that? Can you believe that God wants to do that for you? Yeah. I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, I could go back to chapter 4. It tells you that we have to stop working for this. And if you could just believe this, that he's justifying the ungodly, he'll take your faith and give you righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in chapter 4. Mm -hmm. He's saying you just got to believe this. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying you got to believe that what God is doing for you is a gift. He just wants to do this for you and just enjoy it, appreciate it. He'd like to see some appreciation. You know, appreciate, look, Jesus bleeding, suffering on a cross for you. And you're going to act like it didn't work? It didn't, it didn't do any good? Okay, so all these, okay, we can go through all these. This is a whole bunch of much more. But if you want to go back and read this later on, there's a whole bunch here that talks about gift. Okay, look at verse 16. It mentions a gift twice. And the gift is not like that which came through the one man who sinned, for the judgment which came from the offense, resulted in condemnation. See, that's the condemnation and judgment in one sentence. Mm. Right? Jesus said, if you believe on him, you won't be judged. Right? Jesus said, if you believe on him, you won't be condemned. N nothing for the believer. So that's not for us. What's for us? Right. Look at the next part. Yeah. Here's for us. But the free gift, which came from, from many offenses, resulted in justification. That's where if you believe that he's justifying the ungodly, he'll take your faith and give you righteousness. That's for the believer, right? Mm -hmm. For if by one man's offense death reigned by the one, much more, another much more, much more those who receive the abundance of grace, those who receive it, so you gotta receive this. What did I say? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to get God to respond to us. We gotta respond to him. Yeah. He says those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift, right there he says, an abundance of grace and a gift gift of righteousness, you will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. That's a promise. Yeah. Carlos, you will reign in life. You, you, you want to get an upper hand on your life? You want to be able to get above the clouds, this miserable Christianity that people are living in? You want to get above that? Well, understand that your righteousness is a gift. Okay? And that you have abundance of grace. Wherever the grace got, that means abundance of grace means his grace is never going to exhaust. He's never going to run out of grace. That's what it means by abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Not only is righteousness a gift, but there's always more grace. For wherever there's more sin, there's more grace. He says that in a minute. He says where sin abounds, grace abounds more. That's what he means by abundance of grace. It doesn't run out. Okay? Therefore, verse 18. Therefore, as by one man's offense, judgment came to all men. You see that? Yeah. Because of one man, because of Adam, yeah. the offense came to all men. We're all offenders of God. We're all guilty before God because of Adam's sin. Okay, we're born with it. We're born with this in nature, right? Even so, by one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men. Can you see that? By one man, and that's capitalized. That means, who's yeah. that? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Through that one man and his righteous act, which righteous act do you think that is? The cross. Going to the cross, suffering in our place, right? right? Yeah. He says, therefore, the free gift came to all men, right? Yeah. Free gift. This word free and gift is tied in together. It makes you know that this really is a gift. It really is free. And he mentions grace. Those three words mean so much to me. I don't know. If, uh, that means so much. Hey, how are you doing? Are you in the middle of a service right now? No, we're just doing a Bible study. It's before the service. Okay, we're, can I we're, just ask you a quick question? I have the seal of God the Father in the authorized version of the Holy Bible. Uh -huh. And I've given people letters with the seal. And uh, before, and I've had a conflict behind the prophecy in 9-11, Isaiah 30, 25, when the towers fall, uh -huh. and Romans 9-11, Ecclesiastes 9-11. Okay. 
And um, I haven't really had time because I had a conflict behind discussing 9-11 prophecy in the Bible, knowing this verse that no prophecy of scriptures, any private Okay, well, I can talk to you about this afterward or something? Because sure. I don't want to um, interrupt this. This is being videotaped, and I don't want to, I don't want to take okay, away from I'm this. I'm sorry. Uh, when can I talk with you? Well, I'll be, uh, we'll have a half hour in between the service and the... Uh, Maybe in about, uh, what time is it? Uh, about Maybe in about 15, 20 minutes 20 or so, 20 25 minutes. minutes. Okay. Okay? Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. It might take another 10 minutes if I talk yeah. about that. Right, I don't right, want to take away yeah, from this. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. So, um, um. So you said the free and much more. Yeah. Yeah. See, much, Grace. see, this is important. Free, gift, much more he's going to do now that you're saved. Much more. Six times. And it's yeah. a free gift, free gift. And it's all about grace, abundance of grace, gift of righteousness. Dude, are you seeing what's in here? Mm -hmm. This is so huge. And, and I don't hear this taught on the way that I'm trying to teach on it. You know, I'm attempting to give it the best shot I can. But, you know, I've studied this long and hard, and it's just, it blows my mind what is in here. Mm -hmm. Right? Because people put, still put it in a works relationship. Mm -hmm. You still got to work for what you're getting, you see, at least to sustain it. I mean, you may not earn it to get it. You don't have to do anything to get it. You just trust in Jesus to get saved. But now you're saved. You got to work to sustain it. That would be a dead work. If you, that would be dead works. Now, if you're working because I am saved and I am righteous and I'm, I'm sanctified once and for all, I'm perfected forever. I'm a child of God. And now I just live out the fact that I'm his child and I want to be like dad. And I just want to be holy as he is holy. I want to, I just want to live, I want to just live a godly life. I don't want to sin, right? See, the Bible says that the same way you received Jesus Christ, so walk in him. Yeah, That's same way you receive him, same way you walk yeah. in him. So it you receive that, him yeah. by faith, you walk by faith. The Bible says just, just shall live by faith. It says it so faith we just got to keep, we put our faith where it belongs. It's a faith walk, yeah. right? He says, I know, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. I don't want to live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith. Mm. Right? Yeah. And Jesus who loved me and died for me. See, what is my faith in? What I do for him? No, he said, Am I, we walk by, uh, we, we, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and loves me. Uh -huh. So it, it's not faith in what, my, what I'm doing for him. It, it's a response to him and what he's doing for me. You see, that's what yeah. this teaching is. That's yeah. what this is. It's a response to him, not not him trying to get him to respond to me. Right? right? It says he loves me. Him. He died for me, and I'm responding to him. He died for, for me. And the Bible says all, if he died, if he, if he, the Bible says that, uh, oh, that's the next one we'll go to. But, but, oh, yeah. but he actually said, okay, we'll look at that next. So you see what I mean? The, these two scriptures tell you that God is not doing less oh, yeah. now that you're saved. Right. Go to Romans chapter 8. Or we can finish this. Let's finish this. Okay, uh, so verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, yeah. so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Yeah. So let me tell you, your disobedience to make you unrighteous. Do you understand that? That's what he's saying. It was one man's disobedience that made you unrighteous, that made Adam. you a sinner. Yeah. So it was Adam. That's why you're a sinner. Because Adam, right. not because of you. Right. You're a sinner because of Adam. Right. But the point he's making is in the same way that one man can make you and you and you and me and you and all of us sinners in the same way that one man, Jesus, through his act of obedience, right. can make you, you, you and me, all of us righteous. Yes. Yeah. So if it's his obedience that makes me righteous, your disobedience can't make you unrighteous. Your disobedience didn't make you unrighteous to begin with. Uh, yeah. Adam did. I, yeah. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's the Bible is what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. He even goes on to say the point he's making is, is plain because he says that. He says, so this is so true, what I'm telling you, that even where your sin abounds, his grace will abound much even more. more. Yeah. And he says that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you, he says it. Mm -hmm. I'm not making this up. This is Bible. Yeah. It's just you need to look at what he's saying. Right? And it confirms that elsewhere. I, this is not just here. He says that he will be merciful to your unrighteousness. I don't know. What, is, what does that mean to you? He won't punish your sin. He won't punish your sin. You might sin, but don't worry. I'm not going to punish you for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be merciful to your unrighteousness. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm not going to remember your sins anymore. You know what he says? I will remember. When he says, I remember your sins no more. People take that to mean that he forgets all your sins. He's not some forgetful God. 
Right. He says, I will. That means it's a choice. I will remember your sins no more. That means he's choosing not to think about it. He's choosing to remove that from the, his thinking, from his mind. It's not there. It's a choice. It's not some, he's not some forgetful God. How can, he, how can he forget? People, I read it in books all the time that he sows your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. He forgets your sins and he uses scripture to, that says that he remembers them no more. God knows everything. There's nothing, it's called omniscience. There's nothing he does not know. He does not just have knowledge, he has knowledge is. That means he knows everything you know, everything you know, everything you know. If there's life on other planets, he knows everything that those aliens know. He has all knowledges. He knows everything. And to say that a God with that much knowledge could actually forget something? Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? Right, right. He God... doesn't forget. This is important. Yeah. This is important. This is important. <laughs> this is important because you got to understand that's how we should be. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, should, I, I, should, I should have that approach. Mm. You know what? I'm not going to think about your sin. You know, I'm I, I can't I could say, hey, I'll forget about it, you know, but you know, depending on how wrong you wrong me. Yes. And depending <laughs> on what you did to me, mm. I might say, you know what, I'm not gonna think about it, you know what, but the next time I see you, bam, I'm gonna see that thing you did. Yeah. See, we don't have that capacity yeah. to choose not to really think about it. Oh wow. Yeah. We could yeah. give it our best shot, but you know what? Never really gonna happen. Right. Depending yeah. on how bad you hurt me. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. God has the capacity to do it. God can do it. When he chooses not to remember, he doesn't remember it. It's gone the minute you do it. Hmm. That's what he means. Our, that, why does he connect being merciful to your righteousness with remembering your sins no more? Why is he connecting those two? Because he's real. Because, he the, mi remember him because the minute you sin, you can count on mercy. I'm being merciful to your righteousness. So the minute you sin, it's not there. Hmm. I'm not holding it against you. I'm being merciful to your righteousness. I'm not remembering it. I'm, it's not, I'm not thinking about it. You are. Yeah. That's deep. Mm. But if we have that approach, if you have this perspective that, that, that God has given me, dude, it's just, it's just my mind, this, this occupies my mind, just thinking about the grace of God and all these scriptures and everything, it just, it just occupies my mind. And I, you know, sin, you know, it's, it's not attractive the way it used to be. It, this is. Yeah. God's grace, his mercy, his unconditional love. I find that so attractive. It consumes me. <coughs> you see what I mean? God is so attractive. He consumes me. That's what Paul meant when he said that the love of God compels me. It's just God is so amazing. It's oh. like he, he captures your, your heart. He captures your attention. You know, and other things just seem less attractive. It loses their appeal. Isn't that great? Mm. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and we think we have to stop, stop yes. doing and that, and stop doing this, and stop doing. We're fixating in the wrong place. You. Yeah, we're evidence of his changing. Yeah, you're fixating yeah. in the wrong stuff. I can't do this. I got to stop that. I got to do this. No, just focus on him and his goodness. And dude, he will cap. He will he will transform your thinking. The Bible says, "Be transformed by the renewal of your mind." What do we got to renew our mind to? Him. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So verse 20, okay, we just read that one man's disobedience made us sinners. In the same way, one man's obedience. Well, can you get that? Verse 19, one man's obedience made you righteous. See, that kind of kicks the whole establishing your own righteousness to the curb, doesn't it? Right, that one scripture. He, Romans 10 says we are to stop establishing. If you're still trying to establish your own righteousness, you're not submitting to the righteousness of God because Jesus ended the law for righteousness. So we need to stop trying to establish our own. Right? And just realize that it's his obedience that makes me righteous, not mine. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise like you're on a treadmill. Oh, dude! Yeah. It's Bible, but people seem to over... When you hear other things, it could steal this. That's why you need, that's why you need to be centered on grace. You really need to center on grace, because otherwise other ministries, other people's teachings will take this away, and you'll start to question. You know, don't don't forget this. Oh yeah. This stuff, this is stuff I get so planned in my head I could quote it instantly. I, it's like I, I have I, sometimes I preach. You guys see me teach, and sometimes I'm just throwing like a hundred different scriptures out there, all saying the same thing, because these I digest. I, I soak it up. It's like, dude, I need to keep this form, foremost in my mind so I don't hear the the devil's lies, this misinterpretations of scripture, the way that people preach certain things certain way. I gotta know that. It's not it. 
Mm -hmm. That's not it for me. You know, other people might be swallowing that hook and sinker, but I'm not. I know I already have a passing grade. I know I already have an A. I know God is smiling on me because of who I am, not because of what I do. He doesn't like what I do, but he does, sure loves me, yeah. you know? And that's what you need to see. He's smiling on you because of your faith in Jesus Christ. You're his child. You're adopted. And the Bible says all those who receive Jesus, he gives you the right to be called a child of God. He's smiling on you because you're his kid, right? Yeah. That's like what I tell people. I tell people when Jesus, when Jesus, this is good. When Jesus, okay, in the water baptism, you know when Jesus went through the water baptism? Right? Yeah. And, he, and, and, and the Holy Spirit came upon him and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Right? right. Mm -hmm. You know Jesus hadn't done a thing. He hadn't preached one sermon. Right. He, hadn't cast, he hadn't raised the dead. He hadn't cast out any demons. He hadn't worked any miracles. He hadn't healed any lepers. He hadn't done anything. He was, he, right? He hadn't done none of that. Right. And here's God saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. It wasn't because of what he did. It was because of who he was. Okay, and that's what God is saying about you now that you're adopted in a family of God through your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says all those who receive Jesus, he gives the right to become children of God. You're a child of God through because you received Jesus into your heart and said, yes, I want him. Okay, you become, you become a child of God, right? And, and, and that's what's making God smile. The Bible says it pleased him to bruise his son. It pleased him to bruise his son because you would come to him through him. Because you would be his child because of Jesus and what he did for you. Now he can smile on you. If he's if it pleased him to bruise the sun to do it, you think he's not pl smiling, pre pleased with you? Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Now he doesn't like everything you do, but he's work, you're a work in progress. You're his kid. He, he started working you and he's going to see it to completion. So don't get all fixated on your junk. You know, just right. trust him with that. You know, invite him. Your Bible says if you need wisdom, ask him for it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need help with something, ask. You know, but, the, you know, changes will come. Don't, the worst thing you do is say, hey, I'm this way. I'm never going to change. And, you know, I'm not able to break free from this. It's, it's, just, it's just the way it is. It's never going to change. Don't go there. Your hope is in a Savior anyways. Don't trust yeah. in your, your, your ability to change. Trust in his ability to change you. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that good? You, you get an inheritance. <laughs> That's part of your inheritance yeah. by being one of his kids. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be a struggle because you're trying to do something only he can do. That's why it says to work out your own salvation, for he works in you to will and to do what pleases him. Mm. Yeah. Right? You're, you don't stop trying to work towards something, work for something. Work out what he's doing in. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Healthy Lord. All you day know, long. Healthy you like Lord. that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, verse 20, he says, moreover, the law entered that the... Uh, this is heavy. It says the law entered that the offense, the sin, that's what he means by offense. An offense is where you broke the law. Okay, you sinned, right? So he says the law entered so that sin might abound. People think we still need the law today. This is one of these questions on this book. This is a book. I was going to do this, and I was going to ask these questions. I was going to go through so we could do this sometime. But in, in this book that I read, it's called The Clash of the Covenants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and there was these questions at the first chapter. And one of them is this. Okay, I'm going to go through these questions. Watch this. It, it says, as you look, okay. This test of testaments, because he's ta taking you out of the old and taking you into the new. The thing is, they don't mix. And people are mixing them all the time. <coughs> that's, that's where people get it wrong. That's why, you, that's why we have 80% of Christians today are legalists. That's why, because they, 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 they think you still need the law when you don't. They think we're still under the law when the Bible says we're not under the law, we're under grace. Okay, yeah. so they think we still need it. It says, this test of testaments is a short list of thoughts related to concepts many of us have been taught regarding Christianity and God and the Bible. As you look at these, determine whether they resonate accuracy or error with you. Is it right or wrong? Mm. Watch this. The new covenant is addition to the existing old. The new covenant is an addition to the existing old. Okay, here you got the existing old covenant. When the new covenant came in, is it just an addition to that one? No, it's a transition. Yeah, right. Right? It's not an addition. Right. It's a transition. Mm. Yeah. They don't mix. You got a transition right. from the old to the new. See? Uh, oh, how about this one? We should try to live by the Ten Commandments. Is that error? Or is that right? Is that right or wrong? See that? See, I, these are good yeah, questions. Yeah. But this book deals with this. Yeah. 
But the Ten Commandments is the Old Covenant, and it's what what does it say about the Old Covenant? What does it say about the Ten Commandments in Second Corinthians chapter three? It says that they're a ministry of death and ministry of condemnation. <sighs> the Bible says there's no condemnation for us in Christ, right? right? So should we be trying to live by the Ten Commandments? No, but people think when you say this, you, yeah. it means that you just go lie, you can steal. Right. No, we're living by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us to not lie yeah. and to steal. We have life in the Spirit. Yeah. So the Ten Commandments is part of the law, and we're not under the law. Yeah, we're not under the law. Right? Anymore. We're not right. under the law. We're under grace. Okay, I'll see you. Take care. Are you taking off? Jack's oh, you're taking... The Jack's, uh, Carl's taking Jack home. Oh, he's bringing a car? I think he's... No, I think you can follow Carlos, right? Are you going to stay? I'm staying here with Henry. Oh, okay, I'll follow Carlos. Follow Carlos, yeah. Okay, Henry. All right, Jack. Thanks for coming, man. Take care, Ron. All right. God bless you, Jack. Right. Yeah. Nice meeting you, sir. That's Carlos, too. Carlos. <laughs> Regina. Take care. All right, Jack. I'll see you, brother. God bless you, man. Thanks for coming. Bye, Andy. Thanks a lot, brother. It looked like you were soaking up a lot of this. Huh? I was soaking up. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jack. See you, right. brother. See you later, Jack. Bye. Bye. See you Bye, next Jack. week. See you next week, Jack. Great. Now, because like Paul says in Ephesians, in the New Covenant, he says, if you're lying, tell the truth. Yeah. If you're stealing, get a job. Right, and we know that murder, I, I mean, uh, is, is something that's going on in the heart first, where you're even angry. Jesus said you already committed the act of murder. Okay, those are ten, those are commandment things. Yeah. But we know, but here's the thing, we're being lead, led by love. It's in Amen. spirit of love in us. And it is not loving to lie. It's not loving to steal. It's not loving to be angry and hold a grudge or be vindictive. That's not love. So what Jesus would teach in Sermon on the Mount was a love factor. We can take that from it. But if you take that as a, a law book, of rules we have to live by. You're putting yourself back You're under putting law. back yourself right back under law. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it, there is a love factor. I reconciled with somebody recently. There was a rift. And I, I, the, I the Jesus said that if you somebody has a problem with you, be reconciled. And, and then come offer your gift. But go and be reconciled first. And I did that. But that, that was a loving thing to do. I didn't do it because Jesus said to do it. I did it because yeah. it's the loving thing to do. Right. It was a spirit of love in me. It wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't doing it as a law base, trying to keep these principle. Right. These right. this principle. Jesus said it. I better go do it. No, it was a love factor that just motivated me to do it because it's yeah. right. Because it's love. You see, that's what we're leading with. It's not the law. Right. It's a fruit of the spirit. Yeah. That's right. the it's the fruit of the Christ spirit. Yeah. It's, it's not works of the flesh. Yeah. It's fruit of the spirit. It's yes. fruit. It's not works. Exactly. Beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah, it is. Um, there's a bunch of things here. It says everything Jesus said was meant for you personally. Did everything Jesus say mean for you personally? No, well, he threatened you with hell if you called somebody a fool. Is that meant for you as a believer? No. Not at all. No. See, you see what I mean? So there's good yeah. questions here um, that he asked. But I don't want to go through all of these because it takes some time. But they, this would be a good thing to, to go through sometime to, to let you see where you're at with, with understanding the new covenant. You got that? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Do you want a water? I have cold waters? No, I don't. I have. Just put it like that. It's Where are we at right now? Time it's, is 4 o'clock. Okay, so it's almost time. Yeah. Well, let's finish with one more. Okay. Go to Romans 8. Okay. Because here's my point. People think you, like I said, you think God will do less. I just proved to you five different times in Romans 5 that he says he'll do more. Much more. Much more. Okay, not less. It's not walk on eggshells. It's not, it's not you got to really bump up. You know, you got to be more, you better be more righteous than the Pharisees, Dylan. Well, <laughs> if I have to be more righteous than the Pharisees, well, then I'm trying to establish my own righteousness. Yeah, right. That's not the deal under the new covenant. And the new covenant, we submit to the righteousness of God and we stop trying to establish our own righteousness. That's what he says in Romans chapter 10. Right, we right, have right, to yeah. submit to the righteousness of God, which is a gift, and we stop trying to establish our own. So if I'm trying to be more righteous than the Pharisees, I'm still trying to establish my own. Yeah. That wasn't a message for us. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's something that was true for them, but is not true for us, and there are things right. that are true for us that wouldn't be true for them under, before the cross. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's where people get it wrong. Okay, this is good. Okay, Romans 8. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, start at 31. Oh, yeah. Okay, what then shall we say to things such as these? I mean, I think this is just a cap, a, re, a cap on everything that he said in here. He said in Romans 8, 1, he said there's no condemnation for you in Christ. 
right? And he says, uh, let's do a little walkthrough one second, okay? Look at verse 8 1. Mm -hmm. There is now no condemnation for you in Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go to another good one. Uh, um, verse 8. So then those who are in this flesh cannot please God, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you in the flesh, Regina? You can't please God if you're in the flesh. So you'll never please God if you're in the flesh. Are you in the flesh? No. Look at the next I'm verse. The yeah, look at the next yeah. verse. But you are but, not in the flesh. Ah, the see? See why I asked that? Because I yeah. wanted you to see what the Bible says. Yeah. You are not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. Right? right? But you're not in the flesh. You're the spirit. God be in you. Okay, now if you don't have the spirit of Christ, you're both none of his. Right. right, but within, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 where it talks about where our bodies are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, he says you've been bought for price, you're not even your own. So he takes ownership of you. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so, so you see that. So there's no condemnation, right? You're not in the flesh, you're in the Spirit because God lives in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, look at this one, verse 15. You have not received the Spirit, verse 15, 8, 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, yeah. so should we be fearing God? Should we be fearing punishment? No, that's not the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit should be confirming within your spirit that he's your dad. No, nothing yeah. to fear. Yeah. But you have received the spirit of adoption, which we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Yeah. Right? And the spirit yeah. bears witness that we are his children. Okay, so you see that. Okay, so there's no condemnation. You're not in the flesh. You're in the spirit. You can cry out, Abba, Father. You have not got the spirit of fear. You have a spirit that we cry out, Daddy. Uh, right? You get, you're yeah. following me. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm leading somewhere. Look at verse okay. 28. Okay. And we know. Now, you need to know this as a believer. Because, as, because those who don't, what do you say? Those who are in the flesh cannot please him. But you're yeah. in the, not in the flesh with the spirit the of God being you. So being that you're in the spirit, now that you're in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is working through you to love God, to respond to God. Okay, yeah. right? So he says, we know all things work together for good to those who love God. That's you, those who are in the spirit. He says, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear and a spirit of love. So that motivation to love God is the spirit of God in you. Okay, we know we all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's yeah. you. That's you. Yeah. Okay. You're called according to his purpose because yeah. it's two sides of the same coin. You are called according to his purpose. What is his purpose? He tells you in a minute that his purpose is that you be transformed into the image of his son. Mm -hmm. That's his purpose. And you're called to that as a believer. So, so he's going to, he promises to work everything out for good. Don't worry. You know what? Everything in your life is going to work out for good. You, things can work out bad here, but you know what? You're, this isn't all there is. So you're going to see good, if you don't see some, if it's not going to work out so great here, and you're not, you know, it's going to work out good there. Mm. You, you're going to go to heaven, absent from the body, present yeah. with the Lord, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so he's working everything out for good. Eventually things are going to work out great, okay? It's not yeah. so for the unbeliever, because they're going to go to hell. It's not going to work out good. Okay, watch this. Let's jump to 31 now. Okay, so remember, there's no condemnation. You're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit. Right? Mm -hmm. He's he, the Holy Spirit. Is, you don't have a spirit of fear. You don't have to fear God. Mm -hmm. That you can cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. Okay, and He promises to work everything out for good. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. He's saying, "What shall?" We, verse thirty-one. What shall we say to all these things? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. No condemnation. I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. He's God. I, I don't have a spirit of fear, but but I can cry out, Daddy. He's going to work everything out for good. What can I say to these things? If God is for me, who could be against me? Exactly. Now watch this. This That's is my point. We'll end with this. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, yeah. how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Wow. You know, doesn't that kind of sound like yeah. much, more? much more? He'll do free, much yeah. more? Free gift, yeah. Does it kind of sound like that? Yeah. that he, he, you think he'll do less? He says he'll do much more. Here he says, if he died for you, did he? Yeah. Well, won't he certainly with him freely give you everything else? Yeah. Dude, yeah. like I tell people, I, I, if I was going to, I would die. I, I might sacrifice my life for Dylan, but rather than sac die for him, I'd rather, if I could, give him everything I own than give my life. Yeah. I'd rather give everything I have than die for him. Right? right? right. You know, the opposite. You see, that, that's the point. That's what he's, the point he's making. 
Because I, I mean, because if I die, I lost everything anyways. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, why not yeah. give up everything and yeah. not die? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's saying here that if he died for you, can't you count on everything else? Yeah. It's the opposite of what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'd rather give you everything else than die. He's saying if he died for you, can't you count on everything else? Right, right, right. right. Oh, oh, my wow. gosh. Right. That's yeah. good. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's a, that's a hope. Isn't it? Yeah. It is, and he goes on to talk about if he, it, that he won't bring a charge against you, no charges. He goes on to say that he won't condemn you. He died for you. He's inter interceding for you. He says that you're more than a conqueror through Christ. He goes on. That's, that's just that's the beginning. Yeah. Oh, amen. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Isn't that great? Yeah. Father, I thank you for these brothers and sisters. We're your children through your blood, through our, for, for, for our, we're not just professors of, of knowing you. We know you. We're not just saying it. We know you. We've received you, and we are your children. And we thank you that you receive us gladly. Smile on your face. Prodigals come running home, that you shower us with tears, hugs, and kisses, and gifts. Father, we receive that. We're there, and, and we, accept, we, we accept you, you accept us, and we're accepted. The Bible says we're accepted in the Beloved. So we just come to you in that place and help us to understand more of what that means for us as believers. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Good, Henry. Thank you.